Beyond Van der Black, written by William Delphin. I have a friend, Thomas, who works as a freelance artist creating booths and installations for event shows. He's quite talented at designing interactive presentations for companies to showcase their products. The last time we got together, he told me that he had signed on to be a part of something big, that he wasn't allowed to talk about it due to an NDA. Then this past week, he included me as a blind carbon copy in the following email. As soon as I finished reading this, I gave Thomas a ring, but the call went straight to voicemail. I drove over to see him, but when I buzzed his apartment, there was no response. His truck is in the parking lot, so at this point I can't tell if he's just not answering or if he's just not there. I know I don't have to wait to file a missing person report, but I'm going to give him a day to call me back and then I'm taking this to the police. The email is as follows. Mr. Fetterman, my name is Thomas Laurent. I am one of the artists recruited by Mr. Gustav Sorensen for the Beyond Vanta Black project for your company. I won't beat around the bush here, sir. I'm scared out of my wits. When I was first approached and offered the chance to work with the next step in Vanta Black, it was like winning the lottery. Vanta Black's nearly 100% absorption is a fantastic achievement. I assumed that the only next possible step was perfect 100% light absorption. But when I was shown how BVB not only absorbed all light, but even some of the scattered light of the surrounding area, I was astounded. The way it strips away the edges of an object like it's enveloping the light in a black fog is breathtaking. I'm telling you this because I assume you've never actually seen BVB used before. If you had, you would have not approved the production of it. The colour is unnatural, sir. It does not belong in this world. When we look up the night sky, we think we are seeing pure absence of light, but we aren't. Light reflected off the atmosphere, light from the earth and moon and other stars, it protects us from the true emptiness of the void. BVB is the void, Mr. Fetterman. It extends beyond the boundaries we give it and sucks away the light from everything around it. I am writing to you today because something has happened. I, along with two other artists, Genevieve Levia and Piotr Eretu, were asked to come up with three unique exhibits with which to show the glory of Beyond Vanta Black, which we did. My own art installation remains down in your research department, unfinished, where it shall remain as I have no intention of working further on it. Miss Levere's idea was a room, the inside of which was completely painted with Vanta Black, save one wall, which was installed with a full length mirror from floor to ceiling. I've been inside the room and it is one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. Imagine stepping into absolute nothingness. Every step, you're unable to determine if your foot is going to touch solid ground or not. To make matters worse, she had the floor installed at a slant. So as you try to walk toward the center, you're going up an incline, but can't see the angle at which it goes. There is a single white light in the center of the ceiling for the matter of allowing whoever inside to at least see themselves. Otherwise, it would be like not existing at all, just pure blackness. Because of the unique properties of BVB though, you cannot actually see the light in the ceiling, even when staring directly at it. Once the floor is sealed, the document is trapped inside with only their reflection. The effect is unnerving. Yesterday, after Miss Levere finished her project, she shut herself inside the room. I presumed to see how it looked. I was busy in my own area, working on my project. Half an hour later, I heard yelling. Hurrying down the hall to her room, I saw a crowd of people surrounding the area, and I was quickly ushered away before I could see what was going on. After things quieted down, I managed to ask one of your engineers what happened. He told me that someone had gone to check on Miss Livia and found the poor woman, sprawled in the center of her room, bloody and crying. She had clawed out her own eyes. Mr. Federman. Somehow, her experience in the room drove her to take her own sight. When I asked Mr. Sorensen about it, he told me that only Genevieve had had an accident, but that she was taken to the hospital and she would be okay. As I mentioned, I've been in the room myself, having gone in later that day. Security had cordoned the room off, but nobody was monitoring the area, so it wasn't difficult to get inside. 
The effect of the room's design with its BVB blackened interior and slanted floor is almost instantaneous. Within seconds I felt nauseated and had to resort to crawling to reach the middle of the room, all the time watching as my hands disappeared into the black fog. As I went, my need for visual stimuli forced me to keep my eyes on the mirror across the room. In it, I started to see things that couldn't possibly exist. First the air seemed to fill with swirling tendrils of colour, followed by sparks of light like the flashbulb of a camera, floating, and ghostly disembodied eyes watching me. Worst of all though, was my reflection looking back at me. I don't know how. Maybe the floor was curved toward the mirrored wall, or the lack of divine space messed with my sense of direction. All I know is I found myself crawling toward the reflection rather than the centre of the room. Or worse, my reflection was crawling toward me, staring at me, watching me approach, me watching it approach. I tried to change direction, but I swear to you, it kept crawling toward me, no matter how I tried to orient myself. And the more I looked into the eyes of my own reflection, the less human it appeared. Every second, it was like watching my face smear like a painting, my eyes, cheeks, nose and lips turning runny like melted wax. But the one moment I'll never forget, the image seared into my brain of the entire experience was when I stopped in front of the mirror, staring at my reflection, it staring back at me, and then trying to stand up. As I raised my head, I found myself looking over the shoulder of my own reflection and seeing my face again behind the reflection, also looking over it. In other words, the face I had come to accept as my own was not. There was someone else between me and the mirror. Someone who even as the realization came rushing at me, stared up at me with the same horrified expression on its face, its features melting. It was too much. I was ready to follow Genevieve and claw my own eyes out. The only reason I'm here able to tell you about it now is that I let go. I just let myself fall backward, struck my head on the floor in the process. I blacked out a bit, but I remember rolling down the slanted floor and hitting the wall. The door must have been swung open from the force, because when I came out I could see out into the hallway and drag myself out. I swear that before I got out and shut the door, I looked back and saw my reflection, only it was standing in the centre of the room, watching me leave. That room is cursed. Vander Black has turned it into a residence of something sinister and malevolent. But that's not even the half of it, Mr. Fetterman. Piotr Arditur's plan was the polar opposite of Miss Levere's. Rather than a person in a room devoid of light, he had your team help him build a full coverage cloth bodysuit using the Vander Black process. Now, everything upsetting about Levere's room, one could explain as why well he has tricks of the mind, ignoring the fact that she is currently missing. What happened to Piotr, though, I assure you, cannot be explained. His suit was finished a week before Miss Levere's completed her room. I watched him be helped into the suit for the first time. The team struggling to find where his legs went, then his arms. Once they had all four limbs clothed, they still had to find the zipper and hood to completely seal him in. Upon donning the full body suit of Vanta Black, the effect was truly astounding. Piotr became a foggy black silhouette. You couldn't tell if you were looking directly at him. He had his work room installed with almost two dozen large flood lamps, drowning out every angle with hard lighting, and still the suit cast a shadow. Nobody else in the room had a shadow, but Piotr in his suit did. Even more amazing, when he moved he left a trail of blackness, a sort of after image of where he had been. I've never seen anything like it. He put the Vanta Black suit on for short intervals every day, increasing the length he spent inside each time. He told me he enjoyed the way it unnerved the people around him. I asked him what it was like inside and he remarked, I can see inside you, I can see your bones. I'm not sure if he was joking or not. Piotr spent every working day setting up and taking photos of himself against various backdrops to see how the Vanta Black suit affected the pictures. There was one I saw of him standing in the glass box filled with water. The water looked like ink. Peter told me that the way water refracts light, it seemed to magnify the Vanta Black's absorption effect. After Levere's incident, but before I went into her room and experienced the horror of that emptiness firsthand, I rushed into Piotr's dressing room to tell him what had happened. 
He had been wearing the suit since before I got to work, the longest time he'd ever spent in it. He was sitting at his desk, clad completely in the Vanda Black bodysuit. I told him of Levere, and he became understandably distraught, asking me to help him out of the suit so he could go to the hospital. At first, I couldn't find the zipper. My hands would disappear into the foggy blackness of the suit's effect. Eventually, I found it and unzipped him. There was nothing inside, Mr. Fetterman. The suit fell away as if it draped on a frame of empty air, the hood deflating like a balloon and dropping to the floor along with the rest of the material. Stranger yet, Piotr still seemed to be inside the suit. It was pooling up on the floor in an undefiable pile, like a hole in the floor, but I could hear him from inside of it. And whatever, wherever he was, he sounded terrified. I could hear him start to scream, echoing from out of the suit's interior like he was falling through a great endless void. His voice never fading off like it does as someone falls away. He was always right there, screaming, calling my name, begging me to get him out. I gathered up the material and tried shaking it, thinking maybe I could shake him out of the hole, but I had to drop it quickly because the way my hands disappeared inside it, I was terrified I would fall into the suit as well. I immediately hurried to Mr. Sorensen's office across the research area and told him about Piotr. He seemed more put out than concerned, made a quick phone call and then he told me to stay put while he marched off to Piotr's room with a group of men from security. I sat around in his office for a couple hours before he finally returned with a gentleman named Mr. Klein from your legal department. They assured me that Piotr was alright, that what I had seen was simply the BVB playing tricks in my eyes. They fed me a bunch of hogwash about how my vision hadn't fully adjusted to the bright lighting in the room, then instructed me to sign a form to waive my rights towards speaking about either of the incidents. It was after that that I had someone escort me back to my own work area, that I ventured over to Genevieve's room and experienced its horror myself. That was yesterday, Mr. Federman. I called in sick this morning with no intention of going in today or any other day out of the fear of my own safety. Already my phone has rung at least 20 times this morning from different unknown callers. Mr. Sorensen tried to reach me half an hour ago and left a cryptic voicemail saying, I hope we don't have to initiate a breach of contract clause. I've looked over my contract with your company, Demtronic, but I still have no idea what he meant by that. It sounds like a threat. There is something evil in beyond Vander Black, Mr. Fetterman. Something Mr. Sorensen does not want people to know about. Miss Lavia is missing. Mr. Edda too is missing. I'm afraid I may go missing as well. I hope that I'm not making a grave mistake by trusting you with this information. Please contact me via this email address or the number provided below. Sincerely, Thomas Laurent, Artist for Hire. Please don't forget to share this video and like and comment. If you have any other stories you'd like to be read on this channel, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. Have a spooky day.